Hello and welcome to Parkstone Baptist Church for this first Sunday after Christmas. We're gathering in the church building this morning, but it's still dark as I uh, record this shorter um, part of a service that we'll be having in the church building. But very welcome to you as we gather as wise men did of old um, in contemplation and adoration of the baby who was born for us, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they'd heard and seen, just as it was spoken to them. I have the wise men in the scene, I don't have the shepherds, uh, but it's actually with shepherds that will be in our reading, uh, and also in these words here, of the Shepherd's Farewell by Hector Berlioz um, and I read them now. Thou must leave thy lowly dwelling, the humble crib, the stable bear, babe or mortal babes excelling, content our earthly lot to share, loving father, loving mother, shelter thee with tender care. Blessed Jesus, we implore thee with humble love and holy fear. In the land that lies before thee, forget not us who linger here. May the shepherd's lowly calling ever to thy heart be dear. Blessed are ye beyond all measure, thou happy father, mother mild. Guard ye well your heavenly treasure, the prince of peace, the holy child. God go with you, God protect you guide you safely through the wild. These are lovely loving thoughts that Berlioz set to music in his L'Enfance du Christ, his Infancy of Christ. Did one of the shepherds say or think some such thing? What do you think? What if you'd been among their number? Some rather coldly call this kind of thing conjecture or dismiss it as smolchy, syrupy sentiment. Um, let's call it sanctified imagination. Apart from anything else, if this tiny bundle of flesh and blood lying in the feeding rack or trough before you were truly the saviour for the world, wouldn't you breathe and wouldn't you breathe with your whole being as that shepherd's farewell does? God go with you, God protect you, guide you safely through the wild. Not only for the child's own sake, but, but certainly so, but also for all that would rest upon him. Uh, because he would grow to be their shepherd, the great and good shepherd of the sheep who saves his flock from death and brings them to abundant life. But you would make that prayer, wouldn't you? God go with you, God protect you, guide you safely through the wild, even though paradoxically <laughs> this tiny baby was God with us, God come to protect us, God guiding us safely through the wild. But, but, but he was but a tiny child. And the world was and is nothing but wild, as events following on the departure of the wise men in the shape and form of the, the violence and the viciousness and, and, and hate of Herod were to prove. And of course, above all, as I've already indicated, we breathe the prayer because we would need him to grow up and come to stand at his father's side to say, because of all that he has done, and because of all that he is, and ever was, and ever shall be, I am with you. I will protect you. I will guide you safely through the wild. I am your God with you, your shepherd with you, forever and forever. Let me read uh, from the Holy Gospel, from Luke chapter 2, and from verse 15. This follows on the, the great chorus of the heavenly host praising God and giving glory to the Most High. When the angels went away from them into heaven, 
the shepherds said to each other, Let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Well, when I was first thinking towards this Christmas and this Sunday and writing these words because they, they had to go out in the Christmas post to get there in time for people along with the other Christmas services, the many of our congregation who don't have internet access and can't come out to services. Uh, uh, at that time we were um, perhaps thinking that, that Christmas as government allowed it to be in terms of festivities and gatherings would be for a bubble of up to three for up to five days but obviously things moved on since then and um, you know many of us uh, won't have met with anybody else at all over the uh, Christmas Christmas period. Um, Christmas in one sense came down to uh, one day but <clears throat> even then only in parts of the country and not all. Uh, but uh, people were were able to form a, a bubble of up to three for up to five days and this Sunday they would have been breaking up and heading home but as we know so much of that didn't actually come to pass. But I do wonder, and I often have wondered over this <clears throat> past year of living with coronavirus and uh, COVID, <clears throat> whose who's wondrous flash of brilliance handed to us the word bubble, bubble, for friendship, for family life, for community, for fellowship, at a time when they are imperiled <clears throat> and need to be more resilient, more stable, more secure, more strong uh, than ever. <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, on the beach at Sandbanks, um, a lady was sending out through the still air above the sea's calm surface, which is a, a pretty rare sight these days, I have to say. You'll have noticed how it's so much windier a lot of the time um, and she was blowing the most enormous bubbles some some of the bubbles were so large that even I at uh, six foot three and I won't say how many kilos or stones or pounds that even I could have crawled inside and curled up like a big baby returning to the embryonic sac these vast wobbly, rather ungainly bloaters look strong enough to last a flight across the channel and get to France and probably ahead of the ferry. But they soon split, in fact very quickly split, into ever smaller versions of themselves, burst or simply slumped or was it slouched into the sea under their own weight. None of them got very far, a small child blowing uh, the occasional small bubble, the rest uh, not even leaving the wand, but but those smaller bubbles probably would have endured, endured better than those great big things. Anyway, a bubble is a passing momentary thing. For all its rainbow shimmer, it will rise for as long as the air inside remains warm enough relative to the air around to overcome the Earth's inevitable downward pool. There was a fatal flaw in those big bubbles, never filled by warm human breath. We wish that our family circles and friendship groups, now that was a short-lived term, would prove more enduring than a bubble, however big and beautiful in its soapy splendour. Sadly, Bubbles will be smaller this year, I was writing, and more momentary, even if they form. Hmm. <laughs> I 
I would never claim anything prophetic in what I say. But anyway, they weren't able to form me even. Now, I may be old and daft, but I, but I remember the childhood joy of blowing small worlds of beauty and wonder into being. We lived in a village um, where the local shop didn't sell ready-mixed bubble pots. Um, I remember the first, the first years of life, the road outside our front gate that wasn't made up. It, 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 it was a gravel dirt road full of enormous puddles and uh, potholes. Um, at the toilet was a little shed uh, uh, down the garden. Uh, you know, it was it was basic uh, in those days in the village. Our dad would add a dash of fairy liquid, always seemed to be fairy liquid, uh, to tap water to tap water filled jam jars and fashion bubble wands out of supple sticklets bent round or scraps of wire. And the three of us would blow feeble bubbles uh, until experimented, until dad um, um, experimented and added more fairy to get the right concentration and off we go lost in happy clouds happy that is until one spilled their pot or another burst one's bubble and floods of tears and dark accusations followed you see bubbles didn't always lead to joy and wonder the shepherds returned from seeing with their eyes what their ears had told them They'd seen for a few minutes, maybe more, if they'd managed to stop counting sheep, worrying the missing. Uh, and they'd seen, for a shorter or a longer time, the Saviour, who is God's anointed, and our Lord. And our Lord. Had a bubble of joy and wonder breathed by a baby at Bethlehem enveloped them? Did a bubble enfold them just as they enfolded sheep? Did the bubble burst at the first plaintive bleat of a sheep in distress or at the thought of returning to a hard, hard calling and the same old, same old of working life before a breakout of angels interrupted to announce a baby's breath? The breath of this baby grown to manhood, adulthood, maturity, willingly surrendered on a cross breaking the silence of the grave one early morning, brought the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with God's mighty and enduring love. He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, John records. We, by the grace of God in Christ, uh, can be filled with a resilient peace, and love and joy and hope and courage and fortitude uh, and so much more than any other uh, transient filler of human hearts and minds and lives um, and for this let's give God thanks and praise let this be my prayer for you today May the Spirit of the Lord, once given and ever giving, so fill your heart, mind and life that you may be strong in the love of Christ and know the joy unspeakable of the life irrepressible who is yours now and forevermore. Amen. The Sussex carol that follows uh, is best sung, in my opinion, by a raggle-taggle mob in a joyous jumble rather than as a decorous, polished performance. You are, of course, free to disagree. Um, if you know the tune, you'll be able to sing it, but it's the one that kind of rollicks along uh, as, unless you're hearing it in one of those polished, decorous versions, as something like, on Christmas night all Christians sing to hear the news the angels bring. On Christmas night all Christians sing to hear the news the angels bring. News of great joy, news of great mirth, news of our merciful King's birth. And so it would go on, but I'm going to read. 
Then why should we on earth be so sad, since our Redeemer made us glad, when from our sin he set us free, all for to gain our liberty? When sin departs before his grace, then life and health come in its place. Angels and men with joy may sing, all for to see the newborn king. All out of darkness we have light, which made the angels sing this night, and I repeat as the music does, all out of darkness we have light. He called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, Peter wrote in his letter, which made the angels sing this night, glory to God and peace to men, now and forevermore. Amen. These words of scripture, Paul writing to Titus on the island of Crete in Titus chapter 3 when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared. He saved us not because of any righteous works that we have performed but according to his mercy through the washing of rebirth and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through our, through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of life eternal. Trustworthy is the word. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, for the goodness and great loving kindness you displayed when you came as one of us, we praise and bless your gracious name. Lord Jesus, for the goodness and great loving kindness displayed throughout your life with us and by your death for us, we praise and bless your good name. Lord Jesus, for the goodness and great loving kindness displayed at your rising from the dead and to be amazed at by your coming in glory, we praise and bless your glorious name. Jesus, name above every name, be blessed forever by this heart that you have blessed beyond all measure. Amen. And may the grace of Christ be with us all. The Lord himself be with you, stand by your side, strengthen you in every way for the living of this day and of the days ahead at the tail end of a very strange and difficult year and as we look ahead into a year to come uh, with more than a simply human hope in our hearts but with the hope of God in Christ for us for our world and for all his people as well as for those whom we love and for whom we pray for this day as we do always God be with you God bless and goodbye.